Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to the session. This is Shweta Roya, English Master Teacher at Vedanta. Hope all of you are doing well and uh, all of you are super duper excited. Are you guys excited for today's session? Can you people hear and see me? Am I audible and visible to all of you guys? Well, I am not able to see myself right now. Achha, one second, just give me a second. Can you see me guys? Am I audible and visible to all of you? Okay, what's the problem in my phone I guess? Just a second, just a second. Alright guys, now I can see myself. So hello and welcome back. So how are you all doing? Sorry, sorry, sorry. My sound was off. Okay. So guys, let's quickly check who all are present in today's session. Seekho or Pucho? Yes, of course we have a mentee session. Don't worry about it. Of course we have a mentee session at the end. Shri Lakshmi Uday, uh, Rupali, Rishita, Farhar. Doing fine. What about you? I am doing great dear. Thank you so much. Hi Shreya, thank you for those hearts. Thank you so much. Hi Ganesh, Vilas, Nitya, Shri. Alright, so guys, did you all go through the previous session uh, where I explained the entire poem line by line analysis? That's what we did in the previous session. So did you all go through the previous session? How many of you did go through? Give me a quick high five in the chat box. Hi Rishita, hi Farah. Please take my name, Amirash. Hi, Amirash. Taking your name, Devam. Yes, we have a mentee session. First, let me see you people whether you have gone through the previous session. Okay, Shreya has gone through. You, okay, Sikho or Pucho has also gone through. Very good, very good. Hi, five, Mayuri. Thank you so much. So, we will begin with word of the day. And the word of the day is snob. Suggested by Rahul. Thank you, Rahul. So, thank you so much for suggesting the word of the day. Now, snob is a very, very uh, common word. I think you have heard this word. How many of you have come across this word called snob? How many of you have come across this word? Answers of the last sessions. Yes, I will take the name of the students who have answered. I told you that I will be taking top five names of the students have gave answers in the previous session. So I'll be doing that for each and every session. So please don't forget to post all the answers in the comment section. Okay. Not me, not me, not me. Alright. So now you know, right? Now snob is a noun. Which part of speech? It's a noun. A person with an exaggerated respect for high social position or wealth who seeks to associate with social superiors and looks down on those who rega uh, those regarded as socially inferior. So, a person is called a snob who is basically who thinks that he is belonging to the, he belongs to the very he belongs to very high uh, high society and who looks down upon the people who thinks who he thinks belong to the uh, you know uh, uh, belong to the lower ladder of the society. Is this clear to all? Yes? Hi, Naman. I am fine. Thank you so much. Alright, guys. So, for example, her mother was a snob and wanted a lawyer as a son-in-law. Okay? So, that's the sentence given by Rahul. Please go ahead and give me your sentences using this word for snob. Come on, people. I want your sentences right now in the chat box. Siko or Pucho, Dheerat Sir's fan club. Okay, hi. Alright. Yes, of course, I do remember. And I, How can I remember you if you don't give me your name? You have just written Dheerat, Dheerat Sir's fan club. Tell me your name also. <laughs> okay. So, Rishita. Okay, so we have Dheerat Sir's fans over here. Very well done. I think, uh, are you Suchi? If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. Sakshi. Okay, Sakshi. Yes. Now I get it. Of course, I do remember you. Chalo guys. So, are ye rose? Do na mood ke se chata hai. I really don't understand. What happens when I see the content? All the names are there. But I don't know how it vanishes when I show you the content. Strange. Anyways. So, uh, Sneha Vedantu's teacher classes. 
Vilas, thank you so much, dear, for all your lovely answers for the previous session that was on fire and ice chapter analysis. I don't know how these two names, you know, disappeared. When I was checking, it was there, safe and sound. I don't know what happened. Anyways, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Hi, Kesha. Hi, Anushri. Long time. Okay, you are uh, promoted to grade 11. Wow, still you have come. Thank you so much for your support. And guys, before starting off the session, what do you do? You have to like the video. How many of you have hit the like button, guys? Can I see the likes coming up? Come on, people, do hit the like button. Okay. So now we have already uh, talked about the poet in the previous session. And also, can, can you give me another poem by Robert Frost? We have done that as well. Another poem which you have come across by Robert Frost. Come on, people. Yes, Vilas. Like, Mayuri. Thank you so much. Come on, come on, come on, people. Dust of snow. Very good, Akshay. Very good. Dust of snow. Yes. So you know about Robert Frost already. He is the only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes and he writes. He is a, uh, he is an early 20th century poet. That's a modern poet, of course. And he writes about social. He explores social and philosophical themes. That is what we saw in the previous poem also, Dust of Snow. And we will see in this particular poem we have already seen in Fire and Ice. So guys, I will be starting with the mapping of the entire poem. Are we ready? So this is a one-shot session, guys. So you will be able to map the entire poem at a glance. Isn't that super amazing? Yes or no, guys? Give me a quick yes, no. Do you find the mapping of the poems which you, which I give you very, very helpful? I do this for the poetry section as well as the you know prose section. So do you find this helpful? Give me a quick yes, no. Okay, Sudhir, Vilas, Akshay, Uday. Okay, so are we ready to check the mapping? And I have, in between, I have, you know, questions for you people, multiple choice questions for you people as well. And after that, I have subjective questions. And then thereafter, we have Menti. So please stay tuned throughout the session. We have amazing, amazing activities coming up. So guys, be very, very active. Do not leave the class. All right, guys, can you give me a thumbs up in the chat box, everyone? Yes, yes. Yes, Manali, that's what I said. We have a mentee session. So you can call your friends also. Okay, we will enjoy. We'll have a, a you know, amazing session. Here you go with the mapping. I will completely disappear so that you can see the entire mapping. Can you see the entire mapping? Yes or no? Okay, come on, give me a yes or a no. All right, do that. Thank you so much. No, Amirash, nobody has placed you in timeout. You are there. I can see you. Chalo. Now, starting with the summary of both the stanzas, the poem is divided into two stanzas. In the first stanza, the poet says, Fire and ice expresses the profound idea how the world would end, either by fire or by ice. And the poet says that both the components are compared with self-destructing human emotions, desire and hatred. Fire is a symbol of desire and Ice is the symbol of hatred. The poet, in the first stanza, the poet says that he favors fiery desires. And he says that they are capable of bringing the, uh, you know, the world to the, on the brink of destruction. All right. And in the second stanza, he says that if the world gets a second chance, okay, if it were to end twice, then icy hatred, okay, would also be sufficient or uh, uh, which means that I see hatred is also a component which is, you know, suitable or which is capable enough to bring about the catastrophic end of the world. Now, theme is, of course, strong and fierce human emotions. So, too much extreme human emotions are definitely capable of self-destruction and also as a result would destroy the entire surrounding and the entire world gradually. So consequence of human actions and what is the tone? Of course, it is serious. We get philosophical themes in the poem. So therefore, the tone is definitely going to be serious. Now, definitely the title is absolutely uh, intimately related. I'm coming back, guys, because this part is already done. So you can see over here, the title is apt and deep, right? It is absolutely related to the 
theme of the poem intimately connected or intertwined with the theme of the poem and it describes the crux of the poem we have already talked about what the poet is trying to say with the help of this wonderful and a thought provoking poem right so fire and ice are two extremes they are absolutely contrasting to each other right the poet believes that both of them despite the fact that they are absolutely uh, different from each other completely opposite to each other but one thing is very common what is that their capacity their potential to bring about the catastrophic end of the entire world theek hai all right and also they symbolize greed and hate respectively greed is basically desire excessive desire limitless desire unbridled desire which is going to definitely bring about your fall have you understood hi yes of course beta sakshi i know okay so guys have you understood the entire mapping now are we ready to uh, are we ready to delve into the poetic devices i have already explained you the poetic devices we will just have a one shot revision of the poetic devices as well are we ready for that Hi Amirash of course I do remember you hi Rohit hi Shreya hi Vilas okay okay guys so now talking about the poetic devices let's have a look first at the rhyme scheme please note the rhyme scheme it's a b a a b c b c b okay now alliteration some say word will favor fire so repetition of the consonant sounds in the initial syllable that is alliteration theek hai imagery the poet has definitely tried to create the image of the fire consuming the world so you know we get a complete visualization of the earth getting destroyed by fire okay that's the image that the poet has tried to create and jamme from what i've tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire so the uh, thought is carried in the next line without the use of punctuation mark symbolism fire desire eyes hatred okay so these two are major symbolism and the entire poem is these two are major, major symbols and the entire poem is symbolic because it is a meditation on how the world will be destroyed All right, guys. And at the end, we have a paradox. Can you tell me what is a paradox, anyone? Okay. Can you tell me? Can you tell me, guys, what is a paradox? What is a paradox, anyone from here? Come on, people. You can do it. Okay. How many likes so far? How many likes so far did I get? Yes, Sudhi. There's a menti. Symbolism improved statement. Ah, uh, not really. Paradox is basically a self-contradicting statement. Okay. Paradox is a self-contradictory statement. So, but if ah uh, it had to perish twice, can something perish or die twice? It's not possible, right? Perish is to die, right? So, we perish only once, right? Or die only once. something cannot die twice so that's how it is the statement is self contradicting and that is why it is a paradox is it clear to you all is it clear to you all statement which is untrue false statement uh yes uh, it's best uh, you know the best explain explanation would be something which is contradicting itself self contradictory statement theek okay? hai that's a paradox समझ आ गया एवरीवन आर यू एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर विद इट सो गाइस आर वी रेडी टू स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द क्यू एंड ए सेशन बिफोर दैट आई वांट अ क्विक हाई फाइव फ्रॉम यू पीपल इन द चैट बॉक्स और थम्स अप फ्रॉम यू पीपल इन द चैट बॉक्स सो दैट आई कैन सी यू पीपल आर सुपर एक्साइटेड एंड यू आर गोइंग टू पार्टिसिपेट होल हार्टेडली इन द क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन यस और नो यस और नो यस और नो कम ऑन ओके आई कुड सी सो मेनी ऑफ यू वेरी गुड वेरी गुड a letter to god yes tomorrow tomorrow beta tomorrow we will see rishita tomorrow we have a session on letter to god the very first session on letter to god okay so you can come and join us tomorrow it's going to be live so definitely come along with menti theek hai so come on people are we ready to have the very first question 
Before starting, guys, read the extract. Some say the world will end in fire. Uh, this is the very first stanza, and I will give you the question related to this. Are we ready? Okay. Hi, Shweta. Welcome. I hope you be. I hope you have a wonderful experience. Okay. The question is, what is the poet's opinion of the world in these lines? A. In the poet's opinion, the world will end in ice. The world will end in fire. Uh, the world will never end, or none of the above. You have read the lines. You have to tell me what's the poet's opinion in these lines. Come on, all of you are saying B. All of you are saying B. Really? Okay. Who is saying C? Uday. How can it be C? The world will never end. Ye kaha bola poet ne? The entire poem is about how the world is going to end, and you are saying the world will never end. Le. Okay, so it is B, right? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. All of you are, most of you are absolutely correct. Yes. Uh, okay. Never end. Never end. Ye kya hai? Okay. Chalo. So guys, I hope you people are enjoying the session so far. Are you? Yes or no? So if you want to join us. And gain hundred percent knowledge and score hundred percent marks. What do you need to do, guys? Just visit the link which is pinned in the comment box in the in the chat box, and we are going to ensure you full improvement. So Vedantu is promising you full improvement. Otherwise, you get back your course fee without any question being asked. Now we will have unlimited live classes with fun and high level quizzes. So every session is going to have high level quiz questions. You do not have to wait for many sessions anymore because every session is going to have quiz questions. Okay. Plus you can compete with the students throughout the world, and the replays are also going to be absolutely interactive because you will have live quiz and the leaderboard shown even in the replays. Isn't that super amazing, guys? So these. these features are going to train you from the very beginning because very soon you will be facing the competitive world right so this is going to take care of all of that plus you will have premium downloadable content i will show you how to download the content i will take you to the platform and i will show you everything step by step theek okay? hai your doubts will be solved with the help of our class teachers okay i will be showing you how many doubts you be have in the sessions and and all of them are solved with the help of the class teachers that also i will be showing you so we have assignments also at the end of each session plus quality tests so guys all of this is for your assessment how will you how you know first of all you have to measure where are you standing and then you will see your right and that is what we are guaranteeing in vedantu plus we have a lot of micro courses what are micro courses they are chapter wise courses so constantly in order to fill in the gaps that that you can have so let's say you have enrolled for a long term batch you have completed the syllabus here suddenly you remember i want another you know this chapter is very tough so i want another live class of this chapter is this possible yes it is possible you can get enrolled into the micro course of that particular chapter right and you can have another live class there so isn't that super amazing so that is the filling up of your gap that we are doing constantly plus apart from the academic part we are also catering to the non academic part your personality development and everything i am personally taking uh, you know today only after the session i have the class for communicative english so that is taking uh, you know care of your spoken english so because very soon you will be facing interviews as well right so we are not just seeing the present we are preparing you for your future as well so isn't that amazing guys so all of this in very very less price you just need to use the coupon code uh, swre pro in order to get the amazing 10% discount guys and these are your plans these are the features that i have already talked about live interactive online classes test series analysis assignments and notes doubt solving during the class in all of these plans now especially for classic what do you have you have doubt solving on mobile app for classic you can see the price details also mentioned you can try each plan for a month also all right 
and for plus batch you have a personal mentor as well isn't that again very very fascinating so guys unlimited micro courses for free no extra payment for micro courses and crash courses plus a guarantee from vedantu for your improved performance otherwise we will be returning your course fee and i also have a lot of micro courses so you can come and join in my micro courses as well theek hai bachcha bati so a minimum of 75% of your attendance and 75 of the tests that we take these are the commitments you know these are the helping hands that we need and if we get this we can have this commitment of your improvement without any questions asked you can get back your course fee to see that there is no improvement now these are the batch starting dates guys please take a note of this theek hai okay shweta sikho aur padho please continue the class yes beta now just now we will start with the class beta okay so are we ready with the question here is your first question for the subjective one okay so nishchit Nishchita, right? Nishchita will answer this question. Chalo, he he was telling me to continue the class, so I have started. So now, Nishchita, come on. I want you to answer this question for me, for all of us, and all of you, all of you should answer. For frost, what do fire and ice stand for? We had discussed this. Yes. Fire is desire. Rajeshwari is saying. What about the rest? Fire, desire, ice, hate. Okay. Yes. So all of you know the answer. Now, where does the problem come? The problem comes in framing. Yes or no? By the way, did you all go through the video which I made for you people in this particular channel? Why do I score less in English? What is the problem? Did you all go through that video? Yes or no? Guys, that video is very important for you to watch. I had prepared it with lot of research, so please go to it. and take care of all the points you will be definitely i'm guaranteeing your improvement if you follow all the tips that i had given you over there okay so do go through it theek aur padho if you haven't gone through it do go through it i am promising you guys if you go through it and follow the tips apply those tips there is a guarantee of your improvement in your grades and in your you know entire performance in english theek hai okay You saw the video, Rishita. So, did you find it helpful? Okay, all of you have already given the answer. So, yes, as you correctly stated, the word fire stands for desire, and it indicate could indicate all types of greed and lust. Now, please see that this question is only for two marks. So, you just need to write in maximum four lines, not more than that. Don't exceed four lines. Okay, so two to four lines. All right. In today's world, mankind's greed is endangering the very existence of the planet Earth, and that is how you know it could lead to the destruction or the catastrophic end of the entire world. The word "ice" indicates hatred and indifference, which is as cold as ice, which also has the same potential of causing the catastrophic end of the world. Is this clear to all? so fire and ice you can also mention that these are symbols for our self destructive emotion this line will add to your answer okay so please add these lines such as such as what desire and hatred okay so in one line you have see you have added so much value to the answer with just a single line all right so this is what you need to practice and this is what i will teach you in every every q and a session because the problem that you have is not with the answers you know your answers i know that the problem comes in the framing and how to make your answers better so enriching your answer framing your answer properly is going to be definitely an added advantage for all of you do you agree with me or not yes oh thank you so much sikhar pucha thank you so much enjambment beta vilas enjambment is when there is an absence of punctuation mark and the thought is carried in the next line basically you have a run on line over there theek hai okay 
So next question is for you people. Very simple question. What is the contradictory opinion of the public? Is the debate where the world will whether the world will end in fire or water? Okay, whether the world will end in fire or ice? Uh, whether the world will end or not? Or none of the above. Very simple. Come on, people. Eleventh English also, please. Okay. A, a single person. How can a single person manage so many grades? But I am managing ninth, tenth, CBSC, ICSC. Okay. So I am also a human being. <laughs> okay. All of you are saying B. Very good. Very good. Good job, people. Absolutely correct answer. Everyone should pat their backs. Very well done, people. Very well done. Next question. Yes, Sanskari. Sanskriti. Sanskriti, yes. We will have the next uh, penty quiz. Don't worry. Why does the poet hold with those who favor fire? This has been asked a lot of times in your paper. So, this is an important question. Can anyone tell me? Are Sakshi acid. Don't cry. If you need any help, you can definitely ask me. You can mail me. I am there for you. Whatever knowledge you have gained in 9th and 10th regarding framing the answer, I am sure you take that back throughout your future. You carry that with you throughout your future, right? Okay. Fire symbolizes desire. Global warming. May I say global warming? No, Mayuri, uh, because he also thinks that the world will end in fire. Yes, yes. So why? Why does he think so? The poet takes the side with those who believe that the world will be destroyed by fire. He connects fire with desire. This is of three marks, guys. So at least six lines you need to write. Okay? According to the poet, desire is powerful and would lead to a quick end since desires of people are eternal. Okay, and you can also say that the, you know, okay, let me first go through the poem, go through the answer. In one, in If their one longing came to be a reality, then simultaneously another desire come in the mind. So what happens when you have got, let's say when you have got something which you wanted, you've got one thing, the immediate next step would be I want that also, right? So there is no end in your wants, right? So that is why one day, your wants, your limitless wants will uh, be uh, will be exhausting the resources of the earth and that's how the earth will come to an end. That's what the poet thinks. So every desire can't be fulfilled which will lead to anxiety. So in case of unfulfilled desire, what happens? You feel frustrated, right? So it would lead to anxiety, hostility, competition among people. That is what we have right now in this world. Yes. So this experience of the poet, now from his personal experience, because he says that from what I have tasted of desire, that means tasted of desire means he has already experienced desire, right? So this experience of the poet leads him to hold with those who favor fire. So very, very important to have a conclusion in your answer, proper conclusion. Is this clear to you? Is the approach to write this particular answer clear to all of you? Desire is powerful, but hatred is better. Desire is power. Both are equally competent. Desire and hatred, both are competent. Okay. But desire leads to quick, you know, I mean, uh, you have desire. See, basically, you can, if you see very closely, you will see that desire and hatred are also linked. You have desire, you don't get that. And if you see the other person having that, you, this, uh, you, you don't have a hatred for that person. You grow hatred for that person, jealous, you become jealous for, uh, uh, jealous of that person, right? So somehow they are all linked, okay? Despite the fact that they are very contradicting fire and ice, but somehow they have this common thing of causing destruction. Coming to the next question, how are fire, oh, sorry, how are fire and ice similar to each other? That's what I discussed right now. In the sense, both of them would destroy everything. In the sense, both of them would purify everything. Uh, both of them, them are essential for life or none. Come on, people. Desire is directly proportional to hatred. Okay. Vilas is saying A. Sikhar Pucho. Okay. All of you are saying A. Which question? Beta, which question, Rajeshwari? 
Okay, option A is absolutely the correct answer. Well done, people. Great job, everyone. Great job. So, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. Okay, with each correct question, with each right answer, like button. Okay, next question and the final question after which we will shift to the menti session. Okay. The poem Fire and Ice carries with it a very deep thematic ideas. Elaborate on these darkest traits of humanity. What do you think? Keep posting your answers, guys. Okay, so frost represent. Acha, previous question. I'll tell you. Frost represent the two of the darkest traits. What are those? Hate and lust or desire. Of the two, he attributes the greater one. Greater is desire, right? In giving desire the foremost position with regard to the destruction of the world, Frost is providing a powerful statement on the subject of greed and jealousy, saying that above all trait of humanity, that is the most likely to lead to its demise, that is perish. Okay, it would lead the world to perish. Desire represents the greater problem that attributes the cause of the war because you want the other person's territory also. You want, that is why you encroach there, right? So that is also desire and that leads to war. Frost then attributes hatred with the same capacity. So hatred is also nothing less. It is also sufficient. However, he lessens the relative importance but still presents it as having the ability to lead to the destruction of the world as and if it were to happen twice. Is this clear to you all? Now with that we come to the homework question. Today's world is conflict written. People fight. Okay. And there is no issue. So that is the contemporary relevance of the poem in today's world. So that you have to explain in fire and ice. Please post your answers in the comment section. I would bring up your answers in the next session. That is tomorrow's session. Alright guys. Okay, yes, dear. Actually, uh, Sachi, your, your video was shared to me by sir. So, I did watch your uh, videos also. Yes, Tiraj sir actually personally uh, shared your video to me. So, I, I did watch. So, it was an amazing job. Kudos, kudos. Okay, chalo guys. Are, thank you, Sikhwar Pado. Thank you, Sikhwar Pucho. Thank you so much. Chalo, are we ready, to the, are, are we ready for the question answer? Question answer, I mean menti session. Are we ready? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Let me switch the tab. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started. Yes, Naresh. I have shouted out your name. Okay. Chalo guys, the code is 4574513. Quickly join us. Come on. Trupti, hi Trupti. Code for Menti, bata diya. 4574513. That's the code. Chakradhar, hi Chakradhar, hi Khyati. Okay guys, so can we start off? First question, are we ready guys? Are we ready for the very first question? Joined? Okay, Amirash has joined. Khyati, chalo, everyone. Come on, please join. You can call your friends also. You can play together. It will be fun. Okay, let's have a first question. Are we ready for the first question? Can we start? Okay, chalo. First question. Amrish, jaldi se join karo. Come on, people. Hurry up and join. I'm waiting for you people. Alright, so first question is on your screen. The, this poem is highly symbolic because dash. It is it's a meditation on how the earth will end. It uses contradicting ideas, none or both one and two. Come on everyone. Five seconds to go. I'm sure I have already explained this while I was explaining the poem. I'm sure everyone will be giving the correct answer. Oh, 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 oh. Some of you got confused, beta. It uses contradictory ideas is true. But that does not make the poem symbolic. The poem is symbolic because it uses the symbol of fire and ice. And it is a meditation on how the earth will end. 
so this the poem is a meditation on how the earth will end using the symbols of fire and ice that is why it is a symbolic poem is this clear to all okay let's have a look at the leaderboard is this clear to all shweta it's not d it's the first one only okay all right hi shri lakshmi shweta okay okay so sakshi is at the top dear sir fan club that is sakshi well done people well done she is at the top and the fastest with mayan sipo or pucho what god rishita madhu hi bye madhu hi bye sebastian twito hola ho ben amruta well done people well done great job next question on your screen the beast gamer hi second question on your screen 10th place sudhir okay good what is the meaning of perish very very important i told you the vocabulary is very important bloom grow die both a and b this is very easy i i think everyone will give me the correct place correct answer come on come on come on come on 5 seconds everyone okay yes most of you are correct good job good job let's quickly check how many of you have done it correctly leader board all right so is there a change or okay so sakshi is again at the top consistent sigo or pucho trupti samiksha sanskruti amirash is this time the fastest well done olivia anishita akshaya and mayuri good job people good job next question on your screen this is the third question so two more to go brace yourselves up everyone yes chalo hi devil gaming what is ice a symbol of hatred passion lust or desire very simple direct question come on people on everyone 10 seconds hurry up very simple question hi sudhir okay end it absolutely correct answer ice is the symbol of hatred good job good job so let's see let's see inesh in your batch ma'am okay yes i remember inesh of course i remember Okay, then Sakshi again maintaining her position consistently. At this time, the fastest also. Sikwa Pucho is also quite consistent. Trupti, Samiksha, uh, Akshaya, Amma, Am, Amirash, Mayuri, Inesh, Prince, uh, Ashya. Good job, everyone. Good job. Fourth question, people. Fourth question. के बाद we will take a break. Okay, let's have the fourth question. Name the poetic device used in the line I hold with those who favor fire. Assonance, alliteration, allusion, both A and B or both B and C. Come on, everyone. Oh, thank you, Sakshi. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you so much for your compliment. Okay. So times up. Let's see. Let's see. Bhagwan, how could you do this mistake? I hold with those who favor fire. I had talked about it in the previous session. Previous session, you haven't watched that. That that means we have alliteration and also we have assonance. Where is the assonance? Can anyone tell me? Don't we have assonance here? We have prominent assonance over here. Can anyone tell me? Misclick हो गया. Okay. So beta, hold those who favor. repetition of the vowel sound o yes oh thank you favor fire is alliteration yes favor fire is alliteration that is correct i'm talking about assonance hold those who favor okay so o is repeated o is the vowel sound repeated that's assonance okay yes sakshi chalo leaderboard let's have a look at the leaderboard
Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, Sakshi is again at the top. Siku and Puchu again at the second position. Prince fastest this time. Good job. Trupti. Are, how many Sakshis do we have? Sakshi, are you playing twice? <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, Samiksha, Indu, Shri, Sanskriti, Akshaya, Amirash. Good job. Final question. Se pehle, I'll take a short break and I'll take you to the enrollment of the course ka link. So let's see how to enroll. So over here you can see this is the session right now going on. This is okay. These are your chats. All right. So now you can see over here. Achha. Let me go full screen. You can see this link, right? Register for Vedantu Pro subscription. This is the link that you have to visit. Okay. Over here you will get all the details. Okay. This is how you have to. These are the three. Uh, this is a self-explanatory platform. All right. So you get all the unlimited access till exam date. Okay. Now I'll take you to the platform and show you how our platform looks like. So let's say I take you to this particular batch, this particular class. Okay, so you see over here, so many quiz questions asked. So every session is going to have quiz questions. 210 doubts asked and all of them solved. Isn't that amazing, guys? Then and there. So no more piling of your doubts. And over here, you can see the replay. I'll wow. show you a bit. So the students are unmuted as well. So you get the personalization also. You get the together feeling of togetherness plus you get the personalization. So that is the beauty of our platform, guys. So I'm sure this is going to help you a lot. And with that, coming back, we will have, sorry, the final question. Okay? Ready for the final question? All of you, don't forget to visit the link. And use the coupon code. And now we'll have the final question on our screen. Here you go with the final question. Name the poetic device used in the line. Some say the words will end in fire. Simile, imagery, alliteration, both B and C, both A and B. Come on. Hi, Naresh. Okay, you are Prince. Hi, Mayuri. Five seconds to go. Good job. Let's see how many of you have done it correctly. The last question. Nailed it. Most of you have done it correctly. Both B and C. That is imagery and alliteration. Alliteration is clearly visible. Some say. And what is the imagery? When you say some say the world will end in fire. This part. The world will end in fire. And also world will. That's also the alliteration. So you can visualize the world ending in fire. That's what I had also explained when I was doing the poetic devices. So final leaderboard on your screen, guys. Okay, yes, timetable. Sub karenge beta. I'll do it. Don't worry. Siko or Pucho. Achha. Siko or Pucho has come up to the position and she is the winner today. Well done, Siko or Pucho. And all of you guys, Sakshi, Indushri. Mayank, uh, Nishchita, Sam, Sumok, Ashya and all of you. Wonderful. Hi, Fatima. Wonderful people. I hope you enjoyed the session. Don't forget to uh, place your comments and also do hit the like button. Share the videos amongst your friends and come back in tomorrow's session. Tomorrow we will be doing, we'll be doing the very first chapter from your book that is uh, Letter to God. Okay. So till then guys, take care and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we'll come up with amazing sessions for you people. Alright, take care, bye-bye, see you again in the next session.